Welcome to the Washington Connection with Candace Miller, your link to the U.S. Congress and how its actions affect you in the 10th District of Michigan, the Great Lakes State. From issues of national and worldwide significance to critical concerns in your hometown, Congresswoman Miller is in Washington working hard for you. And now, your Congresswoman, Candace Miller. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Washington Connection. I'm your host, Representative Candace Miller, and I certainly want to thank you all for joining us today. You know, actually since 2003, I've had the great privilege of representing Michigan's 10th Congressional District, the best Congressional District uh, in the United States House of Representatives, and uh, really one of my favorite assignments is to serve as the chair of what they call the Committee on House Administration, which uh, sort of shares bicameral oversight of the Library of Congress. And the Library of Congress is um, it's the oldest federal cultural institution in the United States. And it was actually uh, formally established by Congress in 1800 uh, with legislation signed by then President uh, Adams uh, to move the seat of Congress from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. And then the library was started with an appropriation of just $5,000, which of course was a lot of money back in the day. And it was housed in the new Capitol building until 1814. Uh, when the uh, British troops invaded and they burned the contents of the library. So uh, a month after that, um, President Thomas Jefferson, who was retired, offered his personal library, which was uh, over 6,400 uh, books actually, as a replacement. And then unlike the library's original collection, Jefferson's library included uh, books in foreign languages and literature and science and philosophy, uh, everything really, books that uh, maybe were not generally associated, of course, with legislative activity, and, uh, and therefore they, it wasn't, uh, they didn't have those kinds of books in the initial uh, collection of the library. And, you know, that really is because uh, Jefferson's philosophy, uh, in fact, he once stated that, he said, um, there is, uh, in fact, no subject to which a member of Congress may not have occasion to refer. And, uh, and it was, I think, that belief and, and that mission of uh, universality, really, that has made the Library of Congress such a, a fantastic world resource. And, uh, and the library just captures and it, it shares the progress and the history and the knowledge, the, the creativity, uh, all for the benefit of the American people. <clears throat> and today it's the largest library in the entire world. Uh, they have a collection of over 158 million items, if you can imagine. Uh, some of our most treasured uh, literary pieces. Um, it also has our nation's most prized digital, artistic, and musical works uh, that certainly continue to play a, a critical role in our heritage. And so uh, joining me today uh, in our program in the Washington Connection is uh, Sue Vida, who serves as the chief of the library's uh, music division. And Sue, we are so delighted to have you uh, join us. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Well, good. Well, all we're going to do today is sort of try to educate our viewers of, of what all happens in the music division of the library because, honestly, I think when people think about the Library of Congress, you know, you're thinking about books, right? You're not really thinking about music, or at least right. most people are exactly. not. So yeah. how, uh, tell, tell us a, a little bit about uh, the music uh, division and, and how, did you, uh, how did you go there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, the music division is uh, a, a, a really, really important uh, and, and interesting place because we have more than 20, it's the largest music, division, music uh, library in the world. Hmm. We have more than 22 million items and they scan the breadth of things that you would expect, obviously music um, and uh, photographs and pictures. We have a lock of Beethoven's hair. We, oh, wow, no kidding, we have, Jeez. Yes, <laughs> we have correspondence. We, uh, it, it's really a very wonderful and wide-ranging collection. Um, and we, uh, we started as a result of those 13 books from Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And now, we, as I said, we have 22 million items in the collection. So it's, it's a really, really special place. And it's one of those things where um, we have so much breadth of, of uh, information that it's hard to find a topic that we can't find something on. So if you want to know something about songs on teeth or oh, oh, wow. <laughs> songs on the Titanic yeah. or songs on, uh, 
Yeah, songs, a song that my grandmother wrote, and I know that they sent it in for copyright. Uh -huh. We can usually find, find something it, on huh? that. Yeah, we have uh, we we have Stradivari instruments in the collection, and we have 1,800 flutes in the collection. We have oh, an wow. instrument curator who takes care of all of that and knows mm -hmm. all of that, knows everything about all of that. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, a, a incredible. Uh, you know, you work. mentioned that you have all of these 22 million different uh, pieces mm -hmm. in your collection or, or different uh, uh, things that you have in your collection and that anybody that was looking for anything could probably find it there. Now, I have to ask you, since I'm from Michigan, now if you were a Michiganian and you came to the music collection and there was something specific that you wanted to find there, is there anything... Uh, Michigan related that we would be I'm sure there is I mean wow, we've got Motown we yeah. have it we've yeah, got it going Motown on there example. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes as a matter of fact um, uh, Michigan native Stevie Wonder mm -hmm. um, got the Gershwin Prize uh, right. the second time that we gave that and and we ha so we have his uh, copyright deposit materials that that he's uh, sent in over the years in fact that's one of the things that we do when we get uh, uh, Gershwin Prize winners is we go and we look into the copyright <laughs> deposit collection and we pull out things that they um, have sent in over the years. And it's um, like, for example, when Paul Simon got the, the Gershwin Prize, right, right. he came over ahead of time to look at it. We pulled out some of his original copyright deposit materials and it was really kind of moving to see him uh, look at this and he said he was looking at this and he said he said this was sent in when I was 16 he said oh, I wow. couldn't even write music at the time he said my dad who was a band player mm -hmm. wrote this down for me and it was sort of poignant and and really a wonderful moment so well I've got a I'm going to ask you about this Gershwin prize then so okay. our, our viewers can understand what it even is uh, two things first I'm going to ask you who was Gershwin why, why is it called the Gershwin prize uh, let me let me just start with that. Okay. Why, the background. What is, what is the Gershwin okay. Prize? Okay. So the Gershwin Prize is a prize for popular song, which is um, given to uh, people whose songwriting has touched the nation. Mm -hmm. And um, the Gershwin brother. It's named after the Gershwin brothers, mm -hmm. George and Ira Gershwin. And uh, George was the person who wrote the music and Ira wrote the words. They were an incredible songwriting team. Mm -hmm. They were very, very close and there are lots of great stories about them individually. Uh, George is more, more um, well known than Ira, but Ira mm -hmm. was really a, a wonderful, he was a poet. And uh, so, so every year we pick somebody who will embody this and, and, and be uh, the a candidate for mm -hmm. the Gershwin Prize. Mm -hmm. And um, that's done by outside uh, experts and then our internal experts. And we prepare for the librarian a discography, we do their history, we, we um, analyze the importance of, of the music that they've produced over, over their, their, the course of their life. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the librarian kind of Im imbibes all of this and uh, decides. Mm -hmm. It takes the, you know, three, four months to get it all done. Mm -hmm. But he actually is the one who makes the choice. Mm -hmm. And I think he's done a really great job. The Librarian of Congress. <laughs> yes, the yes. Librarian of Dr. Congress. Dr. 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 Billington. James Billington. Yeah, uh, Billington, yes, yes. Who loves music. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he really is a, his own national treasure, That's I think. That's absolutely he, right. Yeah, yeah, he really mm -hmm. is. So, as I mentioned at the outset, because of my chairmanship on House Administration, we have uh, oversight from the House side, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, of the library. And uh, because of that, uh, last year, when Carol King won, was the first time I'd been to one of mm -hmm. these Gershwin Awards. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. First of all, being able to meet Carol King. Now, I'm a product of the 60s. I'm 60 years old, I'll just tell you in full transparency. And I, and I had an opportunity to meet her before the whole... Uh, thing started and I just said I said Carol King I think I could sing every I know every word <laughs> in your certainly in the album uh, tapestry and I bet uh, most people in my age group do but that was such a fantastic thing and uh, we just have uh, this was your your uh, our program for the that, program that, for yeah. that Carol King and it was just so fantastic and I thought oh well the whole night will be Carol King singing but it's not. No. You had all of these various uh, musicians that came in, and 
sang sort of their interpretation of exactly. her music. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And and then she sang at the end. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. That's what yeah. we try to do. But yeah. you know, we 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 might have a, a somebody who is just a songwriter and not a performer. In which case, yeah. we would be able to bring in people. The people who perform absolutely love these mm -hmm. these artists or mm -hmm. these these creators. Yeah, and it's just a, a real privilege to be able to. Um, you know, sing, sing the, with the it. songs. Yes, and as you said, you you know, you could say sing every song in tapestry. Well, it's yeah. a, I mean, if you, I think you went to the Billy Joel concert yes. this past year. I mean, how many? If you watch the program on PBS, <laughs> and everybody in the audience was singing, singing those every songs song. exactly, and so that was that was this year's uh, Gershwin Award, uh, Gershwin Prize winner was Billy Joel. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, oh my gosh, Billy Joel! Gosh, I mean, it was just the Piano Man. Piano Man. Was, mm -hmm. You know, I was amazed. Like you say, all these different artists, like Kevin Spacey, who was an actor, got up there and sang. The piano man, and he was not only saying he played, he the, played harmonica. the harmonica. <laughs> yes. And after, I was telling people this, and they said, "Oh well, that wasn't real, right?" Uh, no, it was it real. Was real. Yeah, was I real. can't. I mean, it was just so incredible. And then you had John Mellencamp get up and sing Allentown. Oh, I thought, oh my gosh, this is just too great. Anyway, now I have to say because I'm the chairman of the House Admin, you very graciously uh, allowed me to be on stage <clears throat> when uh, uh, Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice. Uh, uh, so to my air was giving the uh, presentation and I think there were about six of us up yeah, there but uh -huh. I thought oh my gosh in my <laughs> I'll go to my grave thinking about that night thinking oh my gosh I was on stage with Billy Joel but anyway he was just so fantastic and and you know he was so emotional about uh, he wished that his parents could have seen him get this award and, and didn't you love the way he was caressing this thing and, and moving it around on the piano <laughs> sort of like it could, couldn't be part of what was <laughs> happening. <laughs> it really was. It was such a special night. So anyway, that's the Gershwin Award and that's one of the things that you're obviously mm -hmm. very uh, involved with and I know uh, Paul McCartney has won in the past and it, you talked about Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Uh, Paul Simon. Paul Simon. So, uh, uh, Burt Backrack and Hal David, oh, right. which was really kind of uh, nice because they're a songwriting team, mm -hmm. the way the Gershwins were. Yeah. So it, it was. Uh, yeah. And we'll see who wins next year. <laughs> yeah. So you really haven't been doing it that long, right? No. Six we or haven't. seven years. Yeah. We kind of started it because, <clears throat> um, frankly, the Library of Congress is kind of a household name in the United States, but mm -hmm. nobody really, really understands or knows the full breadth of what we do, and that. Uh, even the people who might know that there's music in, in the library mm -hmm. would probably think, well, we're only doing classical music. Yeah. And we really wanted to establish the fact that we are interested in popular music and, and, and music of this century. Mm -hmm. And so, consequently, we started the Gershwin Prize. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the other things that you do is the concerts from the Library oh. of Congress. And uh, this is something that has been going on more than six years. This has been going on for I don't know how long. Ninety years. Ninety years. Yes, yes. a little bit longer than six. Yes. But uh, I I found out about those when uh, these when I first uh, came to Congress. And, the fantastic uh, thing about the con of the concert series is that, again, it's been going on for such a long time. It's um, it's supported by donated money, so it's not appropriated money that mm -hmm. that pays for this. It's entirely free. The tickets are free and open to the public, mm -hmm. and and they're top quality people that are you know just uh, fantastic uh, concerts. Um, and it uh, it was started because a woman, uh, Mrs. Coolidge, not related to the president, came to the chief of the music division and said, um, "I would like to have chamber music." Sh um, Performed, I think it's a really important part of of, of classical music, and mm -hmm. part I want <clears throat> I want mm -hmm. it to be known throughout the, the country, and so uh, I'm saying this because it, it has a relationship to Congress. We couldn't, she said, if I build you a hall, would you have a concert series? The music division chief said, sure. Yeah, but sure. there was really no way of doing this because there was no way a private citizen could give this gift to the government. So we had to, there had to be a bill passed. It oh. was introduced in November and passed at the end of January of the following year, of, of 1925. Uh, hmm. So like 
two and a half months. And Mrs. Coolidge thought that was taking too long. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and then the really interesting part is that they, so that was past the end of January, the first c concert, when do you think it was? That October, October of 1925. No kidding. So the whole concert hall was built in less than nine months. Wow. And it is a jewel of of. Uh, that really is acoustic. remarkable. That's Isn't really, that amazing? I, I did not know that. Back That's in really the days when they didn't yeah. have electric you know, yeah. hammers and saws yeah. and stuff like to build that. It was, I just think that is just the most amazing feat. It really is. Feat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you have all these various concerts there, and as you say, they're all free to the public, and that is a, that's a, a wonderful thing as well. So you do so many different kinds of things there. And by the way, since I'm we're talking about the Library of Congress, I always tell people that visit my office, they come for a Washington tour or whatever. Of course, they want to see the Capitol Visitor Center in the Capitol, and and uh, the Supreme Court and all of these various uh, buildings. But I always tell them, really, I think the Library of Congress is perhaps the most beautiful building in the, t the city. I, it, I it's agree just with you. magnificent. Yeah. It, it is just magnificent. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, so now you uh, are trying to digitize all of this music. How, uh, I mean, everything, here we are in the digital age. And uh, so I don't know why well, we'd be really surprised the, that you do that with music as well. But Yeah, how it's is that a challenge out? because we have to. Um, <coughs> We have to respect the copyright law, um, but we are trying to digitize as much as possible because people can't come to Washington, and mm -hmm. it's really our responsibility to try and make things accessible. Yes, that's and right. And so, consequently, this is a real um, mission that that we have. And um, one of the things that we have recently uh, completed is um, a uh, website called the Songs of America. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to, I'll show you this. This is, um, there are over 84,000 titles of music in this, and they're all digitized. Um, and included also, we have uh, more than 5,000 uh, sound recordings and videos and things like that. There's a map, you asked about Michigan, there's a map of the world, I mean, of the United States. And if you click on Michigan, you'll find there are over uh, 1,100 songs that have some kind of an association with Michigan. Oh, wow. So that's something to look for. But I brought this just because... We have some greats that came from Michigan. I know we talked about Stevie Wonder, but you think about the Motown. Uh, oh, absolutely. That's the first concert I ever, I ever went to was the uh, Motown, Motown Review. Oh, really? Uh, when I was a kid, yes. And uh, Martha and the Vandellas mm -hmm. were there, Smokey mm -hmm. Robinson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't recall who all, but uh, it was it was really you, really you have incredible. A great tradition yeah. of music in Diana in, in Ross Michigan. and the Supreme yeah. started in Detroit. Exactly. So yeah, we actually have a Motown um, museum there in the city of Detroit, which is very very popular. So we're we talking about the. But anyway, that's a Motown song. <laughs> well, Aretha I just brought Franklin. this just because I think it's just kind of impressive when you say eighty five thousand titles, you have no idea. But if you look at this, which is Wow. Double sided and two <laughs> columns per page with all of the, the 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 song titles. I just think it's kind of an interesting little tidbit. <laughs> yeah. So people but, are able to But yes, and, all and we we hear all the time about students that are able to go online and for example if you take the Civil War music, the the whole whole um, uh, point of that is that you can learn about American history if you just pay attention to the songs that mm -hmm. people were singing. Mm -hmm. And um, so consequently, you, we kids can go on there and do whole term papers and, and school uh, assignments because they can pull up the music, they will have, there are pictures uh, that are associated with the sheet music and um, photographs and things like that. So they can, can do whole, um, you know, book reports or, yeah, or things whatever. like that based on, on You know, that. it's interesting, as you say, you can learn about our history through music. Yeah. And, and that is really so true. It is. Uh, now, I'm first generation Scott from Scotland. And uh, it's interesting all the amount of uh, Scots and where they went, but there's a real heavy population of Scots in Tennessee, Kentucky, mm -hmm. in the hills, through the Appalachians. And really, much of the, uh, the country music, I guess you could say, is Gaelic. In yes. its nature, yes. and uh, you know, if you listen to some of the Irish uh, music or the Scottish music, and then you 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 see the with the fiddles, with the whole, you know, everything. So you know who was a great fiddler is Thomas Jefferson. No kidding. That's one of the reasons I think why he had those books on music. Yeah, he huh. was a musician. Yeah, and um, yeah. 
Yeah. So I think that really is true if you think about the history of America. Now, you were just talking about the Civil War music. Like, what is that? You mean like marches? One of the or things that interest, well, of anything course, immediately that was sung. Of war marches or something. Yeah. Like. Anything that was sung in the Civil War. And one of the really interesting parts of the um, collection is that we have probably the largest collection of both North northern songs and southern songs. A lot mm. of the southern songs were lost because of the chaos of, sure. of the war. When you're the loser, mm -hmm. you don't usually um, get to write <laughs> yeah. um, the way the history was gone, right. uh, has gone. And, but we have both um, southern and uh, northern songs mm -hmm. in that. And you can, you can go on in Civil War music and, and find um, mm -hmm. the things that people were singing at that time. You know, just in a in more modern history in my lifetime, I think about during the 60s with all the protest music. Do you have something specific about like something like that or that era or how is it all? We don't have um, the more recent ones in the mm -hmm. same way because mm -hmm. of the copyright law mm. and because we have to, we, we, we can't digitize and put things online be, because they're still under copyright. Oh, I see. So um, up to 1923, we've got really, really good things. And mm -hmm. since 1923, we will th have things on. We have lots of concerts that have been on, but we've had to ask permission to put those on, and it's very time-consuming, and mm -hmm. um, so we can only do a certain amount of that. Mm -hmm. Well, if you were, uh, one thing I we always try to do in our office is really reach out into our schools and into our libraries and make sure that um, teachers and uh, individuals, uh, whomever, librarians, et cetera, understand all the various resources that are available mm -hmm. through all, all the various agencies, but certainly through the Smithsonian and through the Library of Congress and uh, et cetera. So uh, is, is, do you have something specific, for instance, for teachers, like teacher resources that they could, uh, music teachers, do they access uh, what you have there? And like you say, everybody can't come to Washington, so now with digitally or, right. or certainly electronically, the ability to access information electronically is... Yes, uh, we're building um, the teacher resources, uh, but teachers are encouraged to go online and, and, um, and pull up the topics that they're interested in. There's, as I said, it's hard to find a topic that, that there's not, you can't mm -hmm. find something have a hit on. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, to build, uh, br to bring uh, primary resources into the classroom, this is an opportunity, this gives them an opportunity to do that. Yeah, yeah. so they need to just go to your website mm -hmm. and be able to that's right. uh, get whatever they mm -hmm. need there. Well, that's really interesting. You know, I used to think with the, um, uh, it's a, sort of an interesting ap appendage actually of a former job that I had as a Michigan Secretary of State. I was also the official historian back in the oh, day. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, and the, so we had the Michigan uh, Historical Center and then the library our, uh, is right next to it. And I often uh, remember when they, that was right at the advent of the internet, uh, really, for the masses, so to speak. And uh, I heard people saying, oh, well, libraries are going to become so passe <laughs> because of the internet. And really, the opposite has happened. Exactly. I think they're more value, uh, they really have more value add now than they ever have had. And I so, certainly agree. But yeah. your industry is changing so much, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. And um, it's a challenge to, to keep up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. And you, you know, when you think about 22 million items, it's really impossible to ever digitize everything. Right. But um, we have a regular program of doing digitization, and um, we're trying. <laughs> is there something that people look for? That's, I mean, is there, you know, something that always gets hit, as you say? You know, is there something that people really look for? What is what is the most popular kind of a thing that they? look for is just everything. I think it kind of depends on what's going on in, in the world mm -hmm. and you'll find that things will spike and like for example uh, around the time of the Gershwin Prize Billy Joel would have been yeah. you know there would have been lots of hits on that mm -hmm. um, so it kind of dep depends on what's going on in history. We have a blog that we put out mm -hmm. and uh, we try and and keep up with anniversaries and things like that and, mm -hmm. and kind of um, pull people in by suggesting things that they might look at. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, And then you have all these musical instruments, like you were just saying. Yes. The various things. Yes. That has yes. to be, uh, I'm sure there's a you know particular type of temperature, room temperature, everything that you need to do to be able to preserve those kinds of uh, really artifacts. Yes, we do. It, uh, everything is hu humidity and temperature controlled. And we have um, mm -hmm. people that, that watch out for them mm -hmm. and um, a luthier who comes regularly to make sure that they're still in good good 
uh, working condition. Mm -hmm. um, they were given to us um, with the understanding that they would be played. Mm -hmm. uh, the, at least the, oh, the strads okay. were. Mm -hmm. And um, the so what? the the Stradivarius oh, okay. instruments. Oh, okay. Oh, you have your Sorry, own. Uh, there, yes, the Strad, the Strad. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Strad. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have um, we have a, a, a cello, a viola, and three violins, and mm. um, they and they are played um, regularly on our concert uh, stage. By whom? I mean, do you have to? Uh, is there they're played by the the artists that we've engaged to, yeah. to perform okay. uh, for the concert. You think series. they'd almost be hesitant to want to use one of well, those? Well, there is that. There is a, you know, it's not like coming and turning on a car and knowing how to drive it away. You yeah. kind of have yeah. to, you have to be here a, a couple of days just to make sure that you right um, can you, you know them. They all yeah. have a personality of their own. Well, we are so delighted that you could join us today. What is, uh, let me just, uh, one final thing. What's the best part of your job? Let me ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> all of it? Is there it's something in particular? All. I mean, it's like, uh, what, what's not to love? You're the, yeah. the queen of music. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, we are really delighted, Sue, that you were able to join us today and Thank really you. tell our viewers uh, a little bit about everything that happens there. And as I say, we always try to encourage uh, our folks that come here from, uh, from our congressional district uh, when they visit the town to uh, the city to come in and, and see the Library of Congress and we're going to make sure we mention this part of the library as well to all of them but again hopefully they'll all be able to access a lot of this uh, just uh, electronically over there uh, over the internet and see what's all available because it is such a uh, it's not just a, nat a national uh, treasure really it is a uh, it's a universal treasure for the entire world I think it's really something. And so. one of the things I, w I <coughs> should have said and I would like to emphasize is that all of this is in trust for the American people. So, for example, exactly. those instruments belong to the American people. Right. We collect um, collections from people, and they are kept for the American people. So, yeah. Yeah. we do a great job with that. And uh, to all our viewers, uh, as we mentioned, the, the Library of Congress is just a, a treasure trove of knowledge and information. And uh, I certainly hope that you'll all take uh, advantage of these. Uh, resources uh, really allowing everyone to explore American history through the works of uh, some of our country's uh, greatest musicians uh, just sort of with the click of the mouse there on the internet and uh, again uh, I want to thank Sue for uh, for joining us today and uh, for all the great work that they do at the library and uh, for all of you uh, watching this to learn more about the Library of Congress and its music division you can go online as Sue has mentioned and uh, see them online so as always uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the Washington Connection, and I look forward to, to trying to keep you up to date throughout the year on various issues and opportunities uh, here in the nation's capital. Thanks. It's a pretty good crowd here in Washington. And the manager gives me a smile. Because he knows that it's me they've been coming to see. To forget about life for a while. This has been The Washington Connection with Candace Miller. Look for new episodes each month as Congresswoman Candace Miller continues working for you and keeping you informed about important issues facing the 10th District and our nation.